today we'll be talking about how to actually solve the systems of equations that we have studied so far. In general, we'll be discussing three different ways to do it. How to solve them analytically, how to solve them using Laplace transforms, and how to solve them numerically using software like MATLAB. Let's start by considering a simple first order system. A system that has, say, a dash part and a mass that we apply some external force F and we measure its position X. It has a damping B. We can again do a free body diagram like we did before and we would end up getting an equation that looks like this. So MX double dot plus BX dot equals F. Or in terms of the velocity, we would get MV dot plus BV equals F. As we've seen before, this would also correspond to an equation of a circuit with a resistor and a capacitor. So knowing how to solve this will give us some insight into how a system like this would behave. Let's try to solve this using methods that we would, would have studied in a differential equations class. Students might recall that a system such as this can have, will have a solution that comprises of two different pieces. One is what we would call a free response and one is a forced response. The free response assumes that the force or the and there's no external forcing on this mass. And so what would be the solution to the homogeneous equation? And the force response assumes that the F has some forcing effect on the mass. And what would be the effect of that? Since this is a linear system, the total solution to this problem the velocity v would be the sum of the homogeneous solution plus what we call a particular solution. The homogeneous corresponds to the free response and the particular corresponds to the forced response. So to get the free response, let's assume that this force, input force is zero. So mv dot plus bv equal to zero. You might recall that the solution to this differential equation would look like V equals A e to the lambda t. So we would assume a form of that solution and we would substitute that back into this equation. And so what do we end up getting? That M lambda A e to the lambda t plus B a e to the lambda t equals zero. Where lambda is the, exp the coefficient of the exponential. And we can rearrange this, so we have m lambda plus b, the whole multiplied by a e to the lambda t would equal zero. Now this is a very important function. This uh, polynomial in front of our a e to the lambda t is called a characteristic equation. And you, would, you can anticipate that this will show up again and again, even as we go to higher order systems. The solution of this is relatively simple. This, comp this piece cannot be zero, so m lambda plus b has to equal zero. So lambda would equal minus b by m. Lambda is what we call a time constant. So the total solution to this equation, V would equal A e to the minus B by M times T. Let's try to graph this equation. The curve would start at the point A, which would be the initial velocity, and then decay down to zero as time goes to infinity. If we drew the, the significance of B by M, B by M is also called the time constant. And the time constant is very important because it tells us how fast this curve reaches zero. The units of time in this case 
or the time constant tau is the reciprocal of what lambda came out to be, which would be m by b. In one time constant, this curve would reach around 36 percent of its final value. And in two time constants, it would get closer and closer, and about it would reach to 5 percent of the final value within around um, within three time constants. So this is a solution of the unforced system where we don't apply an input force. Let's take a look now at what would happen if we have an input force. So as we saw earlier that this equation will have two parts. One is the unforced part or the free response. And then there's the forced response. And the free response had a solution that looked like V equals A e to the minus B over M times T. Now the forced response, so I'll just label this as VH here, would be VP, okay? And let's assume that we put an input force V of F0 into the system. You might recall from your differential equations class that the solution to this will be given by the particular solution to this equation. A particular solution is any solution that would satisfy uh, this equation. So let's assume a form of that particular solution as well. So let's assume Vp is some constant c. And so what does this? So Vp, when we substitute that into this expression, we get v dot equal to 0. Uh, and then b times c equals f0. So c would just simply be f0 divided by b. So a particular solution is just the input force divided by the damping coefficient in this case. So the total solution, or the final solution, for the full uh, uh, for the full equation is simply that V equals VH plus VP, which would be given by A e to the minus b over m t plus f 0 over b. And if we substituted the initial condition, let's say for instance, initially the velocities are 0, then v at t equal to 0 equals 0 would necessarily imply that a is minus F0 over B. So the final solution, V, would then just be F0 over B times 1 minus E to the minus B over M T. So this is the full response, the combination of the forced as well as free response of this system. And let's try to graph this to see what it looks like. So as t goes to infinity, v would approach f0 over b. And this would slowly rise like that. Note that the time constant of this was the same as the time constant of the free response. The free response does not change um, based on what the forcing functions are. And it's very important to understand the time constant is independent of whatever inputs we are using. And because of that, it's a fundamental property of your system. So here, this again, we can say that in one time constant, tau, or b, uh, m by b in this case, you would reach 63% of your final value. And by three time constants, you would reach 95% of your final value. So 
So time constraint is an important thing to understand when trying to design your system. You need to know how far away, uh, how these time constraints, what these time constraints are, and how parameters of your system influence those constants. In this video, we've seen how to solve first order equations using stuff that you would have learned in your differential equations class. In the next video, we will see how to solve using the same techniques a second order differential equation. Thank you.